Today, I am going to tuft a teeny tiny rug with a punch needle, which is something I've never done before. More specifically, I am going to try duplicate the rug from the Hey Arnold bedroom, but with better colors. In a few weeks, I'll be recreating the entire bedroom in miniature form. But today, I'm focusing on just the rug. Hi, what's up? I'm Jess. I like making things. Every Thursday, I make a weird thing that I think should exist or exist differently. Now, I know I said that today I was gonna drop a video showing a ridiculous costume that I've been working on for a couple weeks. It's close, but it's not quite done, and I really don't wanna rush it. It's hanging in my closet, it just needs some finishing touches, some very complicated finishing touches, which will hopefully be complete in exactly one week from when you're watching this now, or whenever I'm ready. So here's how it's gonna work. I have a canvas that I received for Christmas, and today I'm gonna be dissecting it. I'm going to carefully remove the staples, I'm gonna save the canvas so I can reassemble it and paint it later, then I'm gonna stretch burlap fabric over the frame and restaple it in place so that I can use the punch needle to create a little rug. There are industrial rug tufting tools, but I'm not gonna do all that. I'm starting smaller with a punch needle. The fancy punch needle that everybody recommended is the Oxford punch needle, and it's like 45 or $50. I bought a $14 punch needle, and I hope that wasn't a mistake. Anyway, here's the this. Oh no. This is already proving to be more complicated than I thought it would be. Oh, you know what? I guess I can just rip the canvas off. Who cares? Oh! I roughly cut off a little piece of burlap to go around the frame. Now, downstairs in my stuff making stuff, I found a regular stapler and I found a stapler gun, which I've never used. I hope the regular stapler is gonna work for this. What kind of ammo are we working with? Oh, plenty. So I think I did it backwards, but I'm just gonna go with it. I stapled it all onto the front of the frame when I think I was supposed to pull it around and staple it all onto the back like this, but I, I don't care, I'm just gonna go with it. Also, a factor I hadn't considered is that there's this wooden bar in the middle. Oh crap, those are just staples. Can I get them out? That'd be great. Okay, new plan. Instead of making the rug the length of this, I'll just make the rug like this size. This rug is really gonna determine the size of the entire miniature that I make next. So I think the smaller that I make it, the easier this is all gonna be because I'll be able to use less materials for everything. I wanna open up the punch needle. These are the colors that I'm gonna make the rug. Here's my punch needle. Okay, here it is. First it says to put it, pull it up through here. First try. It's not working. Oh no. So the fabric might be the issue here. So I don't think the burlap is gonna work. It just seems like the weave is too loose on it to make it work for this. Let me try another fabric. Ah. Oh no, that's not going in. that hole is. I think I'm gonna have to buy the proper fabric for this. I was hoping I could make it work with stuff I already had, but I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna buy the monk's cloth. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Hi, so I'm back. Instead of trying to continue figuring out how to get that frame to work, I've decided to simply throw money at the problem and purchase embroidery hoops. Here's my monk's cloth. I did a little test. Here's how the front looks. It looks pretty good. So I pulled up an image of the rug and I full-sized it on my computer screen. Then I took this piece of paper, put it against the computer screen and kind of traced the rug pattern onto it. So right now I just gotta get the rug pattern onto the monk's cloth. I have the rug all traced out and I put the monk's the monk's cloth onto the embroidery hoop. All the grandma vibes. So it almost, it doesn't all fit. So I figured this would be a lot easier to work with than the huge frame would be. And once I get down to this part, I'll just move the whole thing down. I am trying to kind of stretch it in place because from my tester, I kind of learned that you have to continuously tighten it up a little bit. So I think I 
have my strategy down and I'm good to go to get tufting the rug. Here I go. Around this point, I found that the rug project kept popping out of the embroidery hoops and the constant readjusting was becoming very frustrating. So I stapled the rug back onto the canvas frame and after that didn't have too many other issues. Although later all of the tugging and pressure on the fabric did pull out two of the staples, but that was an easy fix. Alrighty, next I'll be time lapsing some soothing punch needling for your eyes to enjoy and voiceovering uh, words for your ears. To, uh, put up with. Hello and welcome to a completely unrelated segment called Four Unrelated Truths and One Unrelated Lie. Movies often replace the sound of a bald eagle with the sound of a red-tailed hawk due to its more impressive sound. Animals like cats and dogs enjoy squeaky toys because it reminds them of the squeaky sounds that smaller animals make as they pass away due to natural causes like being eaten by a cat or dog. Your eyeballs are actually just an extension of your brain. Air fryers have been around since the 80s but were banned in several parts of Europe. They rose in popularity last winter after the bans officially expired. The woman who does the voice of Karen, Plankton's computer wife, is married to the man who does the voice of SpongeBob. I won't be revealing which of these was the lie. Just kidding, I'll share which of these was the lie at the end of the video. Next, I would like to discuss a few things that have been on my mind lately for no reason. I wish that when I woke up, my brain would make the same sound that a MacBook does when you turn it on. The lyrics in the Hootie and the Blowfish song, Only Wanna Be With You, that go, I'm such a baby because the dolphins make me cry, is about a football team and not about crying over how cute dolphins are. I found this profoundly disappointing in ways I cannot fully describe nor have processed yet. Why is customizing Nike Air Force One sneakers with paint so popular when so many more interesting shoes exist? Just buy more interesting shoes to begin with. Trumpets are the best part of music. They often go criminally underrated. Older coworkers is fun because you can recycle jokes from Twitter on them. Having older coworkers is isn't fun because you always have to say the aforementioned joke twice. I said I have to say the joke twice, Linda. A few months ago, I had a dream that I bought a yoga mat on Wish.com, and when it arrived, it was only one foot wide. Comment below what you think this says about me. And don't hold back. I can handle the truth. So instead of buying industrial rug glue for the back of this, I thought I could just try use hot glue. I have so many hot glue sticks left over from my Furby projects a couple months ago. My hot glue sticks. To finish off the rug, I'll be saturating the back with hot glue. Then I'll fold in the edges, glue them in place, and finish the back by gluing on some yellow scrap fabric. I'll give the top a haircut with some scissors and a hair trimmer my boyfriend let me borrow so that my uneven punch needle punches all lay flat. Here are my final thoughts on rug tufting with a punch needle as a new hobby. Honestly, for me, this wasn't as fun as my other hobbies. This may be due to the cheap yarn and cheap punch needle I used, but I couldn't get the yarn to stay in the fabric consistently. I kept having to go back and fix things. Maybe my form wasn't good because I'm new at this, but using the punch needle tool was a little bit tiresome on my hand. I'd still recommend trying this new hobby out because, I mean, it was a satisfying project to see come together. If you want to try punch needling, definitely use the same type of yarn for the entire project. The lighter purple yarn was thinner than the darker purple, and I think the wavy stripes came out a little bit less precise and a little more uneven because of this. Although my decision to use the two shades of purple in my opinion did add a nice little bit of dimension. It looked pretty. Anyway, I'm glad I have this new skill in my arsenal and I'm not fully giving up on it, but I don't think I'll be punch needling anything else anytime soon. Again, in a few weeks, I'm going to be recreating the entire Hey Arnold bedroom, only in different colors and styles. I'm not wildly impressed with how accurate to the show that I made this rug, but hopefully it'll start to come together when the whole project is complete. It's basically how I would design the Hey Arnold room for myself. So I'm gonna add house plants, some modern furniture made out of clay, and some extra playful design elements. Finally, I'm going to attempt to green screen myself into the final bedroom, which I'm really excited for. It's gonna be really cool. 
Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Every Thursday I make a weird thing that I think should exist or exist differently. And I try to demonstrate crafty hobbies that you might enjoy. Comment below what weird thing you think should exist or exist differently. And I may or may not make it happen. Hopefully by next week, I'll be brave enough to post a video about that costume I've been working on for ages. <laughs> also, I'm on Instagram as Jessica Crafternoon in between uploads. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Bye. And the thing I said about air fryers was a lie. Bye.